Welcome to day 12 of my carnivore journey. I know it doesn't sound like much day 12, but it's exciting to me. You know why it's exciting to me? Because we have yesterday I did my morning wake up weigh in. Yesterday I was 161.9 kilos. This morning, 161.1 kilo. That is a loss of 8 tenths of a kilo or 1.8 pounds. Beats the 0.4 pounds yesterday. The weight's coming off. And I'm not starving myself, folks. If I'm hungry, I eat. If I'm not hungry, I really don't. How do I know I'm not hungry? Because once I start eating, I eat until I just stop wanting to eat it. You know, tastes good, tastes good, tastes good. And eventually, you look down and you get that, like last night, we I had salmon. And I had about that much of a piece of salmon. I had three pieces of salmon about an inch and a half thick. I'll have a, I might have a picture of that. But when I was done, I had about a three-inch piece of salmon that was laying on the plate, and I found myself sitting back and watching something on on YouTube, and I said, eh, I'm full. I mean, literally, I just said, I'm full. And I put that away into the refrigerator, and I said, yeah, I can heat that back up and eat the rest of it later. And... uh when my stomach starts feeling queasy, you know, like it just don't, my stomach don't feel right, then I know it's time to eat, and I eat, and I eat until I'm full, and then I don't eat. The hardest part about this journey so far, nighttime, like. 9 o'clock at night till I go to bed. It's just like, where's the potato chips? Where's the pretzels? Ice cream. I need something to snack on. I need something to snack on. I mean, it's like, Ugh. It's like in my head, like, yeah. But, I say to myself, fat boy, fat boy, you don't need any ice cream. That shit tastes terrible. I pretend like I am a progressive left lying media person. And I look myself straight in the eye and I lie. I mean, I should be used to hearing lies by now. I mean, half of the world lies to the other half of the world. And yeah, that's where our societies went wrong. I mean, like, if the truth don't fit your needs, lie. That's where the worldwide consciousness is now. I think that's why I love Thailand so much. The Buddhist culture here wants people to smile. And, and yeah, they've got some people who do bad things and that there, there you know there's a people who cheat and steal and there's a few of them around but it's nothing like some parts of the world it's nothing like america i mean the percentages are way lower you know but basically since like 1995 the world's turned to a point of i have an agenda and i'll say whatever i have to to promote or defend my position on my agenda. And I'll look straight in the camera and I'll just lie. And here's an interesting tidbit. They lied to us about our diet. In the 70s when they allowed uh, corn syrup to be used in all the foods, they allowed that basically that opened the door to massive obesity. We'll just put corn syrup in everything, pure sugar, altered, unalterated, 
fructose, corn syrup, fructose, whatever it is. When they started that in the 70s, they started lying to you about the food pyramid and all that, which was bought and paid for by the people wanting you to buy the, buy the corn syrup the corn fructose stuff that they put in there. I really should have researched this before. I get my fructoses and my sucroses and sometimes get them screwed up because basically I didn't take an active interest enough in health. But since like 1995, lying became the way it goes. Nobody was held accountable to the truth. And you know, recently, in the woke Western uh, totalitarian socialism leaning wokeness, they actually got people to say there's more types of human beings than man and woman. There's not only just a man or a woman. No, you can be a lot of other things. And when they, when the woke World Economic Forum leaning leftists who are seeking world, a new world order, when they got people to actually stand in front of cameras and say, well, men can have children. When they got them to deny that there's a man and a woman, and that's it. There's a man and there's a woman. And they wouldn't say that. And when asked, there are people who get in front of a camera, uh, in front of millions of people and say, uh, sir, do you believe men can have children? You must be a biological boy to be a Boy Scout. You have to be a boy to be a Boy Scout. In the name Boy Scouts. Because, because, it, because this is, because this is a, a very... Okay, for, because for all of human history, boy meant boy and girl meant girl. Boy did not mean girl. And if I call you a moose, are you suddenly a moose? Okay, if I redefine our terms. No, it's a, yes, that's right. Men and women are a completely different thing. This is true. Have you ever met a man or a woman? How, uh, okay, I won't ask you how old. I will ask you how old you are, okay? Because you're young enough that it's probably not insulting to ask you. So, I'm 22, so I'm probably only naive, right? No, why aren't you 60? Why aren't you 60? Because it's the same as gender. You can't just... You're right. Age is significantly less important than gender. You can't magically change your gender. You can't magically... Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. When the leftist progressives can get the public to buy into that lie... They know they can sell them people anything. They can tell them anything. They can say, stay in your homes. Don't go anywhere. You got to take this shot. We're going to put a chip in your arm so we know where you're at. We're going to take away your rights and freedoms and passports, and you're going to do what we say. And if you don't do what we say, we're just not going to give you any food today. That's where they're going to. Because they know if they can get a substantial portion of the American public going so woke crazy that they'll say, well, there's more types of humans than men and women. Oh, yeah, you can be, a, you can be an in-between. Yeah, you, you, can be, you can have five breasts, and you can be a man and, and have children. You've referred to people with a capacity for pregnancy. 
would that be women? Many women, cis women, have the capacity for pregnancy. Many cis women do not have the capacity for pregnancy. Um, there are also trans men who are capable of pregnancy, as well as non-binary people who are capable of pregnancy. Your line of questioning um, is transphobic, <laughs> um, and it opens up trans people to violence by not recognizing them. Wow, you're saying that I'm opening up people to violence by asking whether or not women are the folks who can have pregnancies? Denying that trans people exist and pretending not to know that they exist I'm denying dangerous. that trans people exist by asking are you? you if you're talking are you? about women are you? having pregnancies. Do you believe that uh, men can get pregnant? No, I don't think women can <laughs> so get pregnant. So you are denying that trans people exist? Thank and that leads to violence? Is this how you run your classroom? Are students allowed to question you? Absolutely. Or are they also treated like this? Where no, no, no. They're, they're, told they're to opening up people to oh, violence We have a good time questioning. in my class. You should join. Oh, I bet. You might learn a lot. I would learn a lot. I've learned you, a lot I just know. in this exchange. Absolutely. Extraordinary. What kind of crazy nonsense are these guys speaking? There's men and there's women. Not too long ago, a week ago, there was a story in the news of a 50-year-old man who said he identified as a 13-year-old woman. Not only that, he enrolled in a 13 to 16-year-old swimming team of women and he's showering with those women or little girls not women he's showering with those little girls and he's convinced authorities like at the Pan Am Center where he was racing to carry his water and go out and tell people I'm sorry you can't come in here and report on this because he identifies as a 13-year-old girl. He's a 50-year-old man and an ugly one. Ugly with a capital U. No, I'm a 13-year-old girl. Well, let me tell you. I hereby announce that because of my carnivore diet, that I am a 22-year-old Chinese acrobat. That's how I identify. So it, if you don't address me as being a 22-year-old Chinese acrobat, you are intruding on my personal space. <laughs> what the fuck is going on with the world today? If they'll buy that lie, they'll buy anything. You could sell them a grass shack in the middle of a burning forest fire for top price. If they'll buy that there's more than a man and a woman. A man can have babies, sure. Sure, man can have babies. Well, let me tell you. I've gotten a couple comments about this carnivore diet. Some people, some people commented and said, it's horrible, you should eat a regular balanced diet, or you should eat vegetables, or, you know, the poor cows. Uh, we haven't ate anything but meat for 20,000 years. And, you know, I don't blame them. Because when the world at large... When a large percentage of the educated world will buy into woke nonsense, Canada just passed a law that when you're in a courtroom in Canada now, you can be addressed by your pronouns of choice. He, she, they, it, him, her, them, they. You can be addressed by your pronouns of choice in a courtroom now in Canada. They just passed a law that that can be arranged under Justin Trudeau. When you can convince such a high percentage of people that this woke bullshit is true 
and proper. And science. Oh, yeah, this is science. This is science. We got to create another crazy thing. You know, we got to shove solar power down everybody's throat. Let me tell you a little story, true story, right now, happening. Noi, my girlfriend, she has a cousin who works in Rayong, Thailand at a factory that produces solar panels for the company called Daiyu Weona. Daiyu is a pretty big company. They make refrigerators and stoves and appliances, air conditioning systems, and they got a solar panel plant. Well, she worked there until a few days ago when they closed the plant and laid off 800 employees. Why? Because people were waking up and they're saying, man, I don't, I don't know that saving the planet with these solar panels is, makes any sense. You know, we, yeah, we need electricity and all that, but this doesn't make financial sense, and they can't sell their panels. And we're in a recession that nobody wants to talk about. So 800 employees. And Damara, Noy's actual sister, who works for the same company, but in a different location than the solar plant, a different town even, is going to learn whether or not she gets to keep her job or they're going to close her job out. That's 800 people laid off because the woke leftists pushed people to the left and said, oh, we need electric cars and we need solar panels everywhere. And believe me, Thailand's bought into this. I live in a pool villa community here and you walk around the house immediately next door to me on both sides have solar panels on their roof in order to reduce their electricity demand on the grid. Now, I'm not against that, believe me. I have a whole house generator system for when the power went out at my house in Cincinnati. And it was great. And if you put solar in and a lot of batteries in and you lose your electric power and you don't even notice it because the solar picks up instantly in a fraction of a second and starts running the house for the next four hours while you're out of juice on batteries. That's a that's a worthy thing to have. But it isn't for climate change, like they push down their throats. Climate change. Well, the drought that was in California is gone. They're swimming down the streets. Lake Mead, which, is, which dropped hundreds of feet, has swollen back up tremendously in a year and a half. Things go in cycles. It's not global warming. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit right there. I know this is a carnivore diet thing. But I guess I went off on this tangent because there are people who are going to tell me that I'm going to kill myself eating nothing but meat and fish and chicken and pork and maybe a little cheese. I have to have fruit and vegetables or I'm going to die. Okay. But yet, these people ignore evidence of people who have the receipts. People who lost 200 pounds over two years eating nothing but meat and are way healthier now than they were before. Whose blood panels come back looking dynamite. Whose inflammation went down. They lose pain in their joints. They had arthritis, it's gone. 
They had psoriasis that's gone. People who get on YouTube and documented their journeys, like I'm doing here. And those people, they're myopic. They get told something, they latch onto it, they believe it, and then from then on out, evidence be damned, they got to be right. They got to know it all, and they're going to try to sabotage me, and they're going to try to get me to change, and it's working. I look today, this is, this is just a little antidote. When I woke up at my feet, the top of my feet, over top of my arch. Not too many months ago, when I woke up, my feet would be swollen, basically. Too much water pooling in the feet. There'd be sections on top of the feet that weren't quite flesh colored, but had like blue lines going through them and stuff. I looked at the, my feet today and I said, wow, they're not swollen and I don't see a ton of blue on the top of my feet. And this is on day 12, just day 12. And I have lost 13.9 kilogram that's 30.6 pounds in 12 days. Most of it water weight, I understand. But if it's water weight that came out of my feet, more power to me. And I did my hour exercise in the pool today before I had my coffee. So remember why I'm doing this. I'm doing this to document and give the receipts to others so that they can get away from the lies they've been told about the food pyramid and the inverse food pyramid. Hell, do you remember when Michelle Obama came out with the pyramid that really didn't even make any sense? I mean, the food pyramid was created by a doctor who was paid off by the big food manufacturers. I mean, Michelle Obama had this big project, myplate.gov. Well, the site still exists. But let's get to a real truth of the story. This is about making people who don't have enough money in their pockets, who are in debt, living paycheck to paycheck, to feel, feel, everybody wants to feel, feel like they can eat well. So what do they do? They make the lowest cost foods, the, the majority of your diet. They put the grains and the vegetables, and the fruit, and they leave the meat, and the protein, protein's expensive, and they leave that the small part, because look at this right here. This is a site still up. Budget-friendly food ideas. Healthy food choices that don't cost a lot. Find snap savings. Now, SNAP is when the government is giving money to people so that they can eat. They give them a little card, and it's like a credit card. You go into a food store, and you can go into a farmer's market, and you can buy. And notice, shop, prepare budget-friendly foods, and shop simple with my plate. And they've got an app here. And if you notice, it says online SNAP stores. And broccoli, and broccoli and corn bay, and pears. Does it show steak? Does it show hamburger here? No, it says eat healthy on a budget. And when you go down here, 
It says we're on Instagram and recipe of the month with some broccoli and some soup. Set personal goals for healthy eating. Look what's on top. Fruits, vegetables, grains. Now they got protein foods. But remember what the food plate looked like. The food plate said that most of the stuff you're supposed to eat is this green stuff. Because it's less expensive. And they want the people to feel like they've got the American dream and they're eating well. Meanwhile, they're getting fatter is what they're doing. The government is all about making the people feel good so they vote for them. So they come up with this. Dietary guidelines for Americans 2020 to 2025. Dietary guidelines for obese Americans 2020 to 2025. Eat cheap. Yeah, you know, holy Christ, they got some chili here, but it's mostly beans. Don't worry about it. You can walk a cow through there to find any meat, but that's all right. Now, look, it says explore my plate. If I click here, what do we get? What is my plate? Learn how to eat healthy. Meanwhile, 40% of Americans are obese, me included. I'm an American. I don't live there, but I'm still American. Okay? So you got fruits and vegetables. Fruits. Make half your plates fruits and vegetables. Make half your grains whole grains. Vary your protein routine. Let's, let's look more here. Here's your protein foods. Got some chicken, some fish, some eggs. Those are good protein foods. Those are good protein foods. Put a little carbs in on that one. Variety of seafood. There's some nice looking salmon. I mean, they do have it here. My plate's on Alexa. Start simple with the My Plate app. And they show a iPhone and Apple Watch. If you have an iPhone and you've got an Apple Watch, you ought to be able to eat healthy without having to follow the My Plate portion. And you notice here proteins. Less than 25%. But people keep getting fatter. How is that possible? Why is it possible? The government won't come out and tell you the truth. Why? Because the leftist, socialist, WEF, WHO, climate alarmist, Say that cows' farts contain methane. And cow farts are causing global warming. They say animals' fartings causing global warming. And you know we got to do everything to get rid of global warming. We got to lower our carbon footprint as those leftist, socialist, WEF evil motherfuckers fly to Davos every year to make their evil plan, which this year was their two words on their theme for their meeting was rebuild trust. Why they have to rebuild trust? Because some people are waking up and saying these evil motherfuckers want us all to die. They want to transfer the wealth to them at any cost. Oh, Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. The country went down the wrong tubes when they started allowing the 
corn corn syrup fructose stuff that they put in every damn thing. You know, what do they feed? What do they feed cows when they want to fatten them up for market? Let me let me give you one guess. Corn. We want this cow to gain weight because we get paid by the pound. Feed him some corn. Why is the meat on grass-fed cattle typically leaner? You know, they call them grass-fed and grass-finished, being two different things. Because there is such a thing as grass-fed, grain-finished. I've never heard grain-fed and grass-finished. But that means... At the end of the cow's life, before they go to the slaughterhouse, they pump them full of grain because they want to plump them up a bit. Give them a little fatter. Well, this cardboard diet, I, I'm not going for the, for the grain. And I can't get Noy to stop. She, she loves oranges. Jesus Christ. She loves oranges. And I love oranges. And I love apples. And she's eating these oranges, and they smell so good. You can smell them across the room. They smell so sweet. And it's temptation every day for me. But I'm documenting this to let you know you can beat the temptation. I can beat the temptation. I'm working on it so hard that Noy actually said the other, not, I guess, yesterday. You're so serious. Relax. Sabai, Sabai, which is Thai for relax. She says, you're so serious about this carnivore. Well, she's right. And I have to be. Because if I'm not serious about it, I'm going to slip back into years worth of misinformation. Actually, it's malinformation. But this is day 12. I'm real happy. 13.9 kilograms lost. 30.6 pounds lost. Hey, I'll take it. It's a little better than what it was before. You know, 30.6 pounds. I know it's not going to go at that rate forever. It's not even going to be close. But one foot at a time. The road to success is always under construction, and I'm right there with the orange barrels. That's all, folks.